All right, in this video, we're going to talk about try parse, which is a method that um, allows us to try to convert strings into numbers. Uh, we'll be covering uh, F3.4 in the textbook, which is just about the try parse method. So when a user types text into text boxes, the dot text property of that text box contains a string even if the user enters a number because the, the computer doesn't know what they typed. It could have anything in it. And if the computer tried to assume that we wanted the numerical value rather than leaving it as a string, that could actually be really bad. It could break our program. It's also more efficient to store it as a string and not try to convert it if it doesn't need to convert it. Uh, so it doesn't want to make any assumptions. It just leaves it as a string and we have to tell it to convert it. So it's our job, if we are relatively confident that the user entered a number, to tell Visual Basic to convert that string into a number, and then we store that converted number into a uh, variable of the correct type. Here are some examples of strings that we would consider to be numbers, or at least to hold numbers. Um, they're strings, you know, they're between double quotes like this, but they have numbers inside of them, like negative 42, 0 0.38, 5, and negative 837.8320. Uh, things that are not numbers are minus sign space 42, or the string, this string has 0 0.38 in it. Uh, you know, this is not a number. It contains a number, but by itself, it is not a number. The entire string has to only contain a number. A uh, similar thing with this minus space 42 thing right here is that it contains that space and that space kind of disqualifies it from being a number. Five space also would not be a number. And then minus minus 837.8320, not a number because that has two dashes. Or 73.2 uh, is not a number because of the two dots like this, or if we put like a, you know, if it was four dash two instead of negative 42, that would also not be a number or things like that. Like there are things that might look similar to numbers, but actually aren't numbers. The string has to only contain a valid number, stuff that looks a bit like this. Now try parse is interesting. It is a method, which means that it belongs usually to some kind of object or something like that but it actually belongs to the type double or decimal or integer uh so it, it's a it is a method that you would call by um you know you would type out the numeric data type and then you use this dot access operator type thing in order to access one of its properties or methods or something and then you type the try parse method name and then you give it a string and a numeric variable to actually work with like i said before try parse is a method it, it's a procedure that belongs to some other you know usually an object of a particular class um however because it belongs to like a class you know a, a type uh we might possibly call it a static method like if you're a java programmer or something like that you might recognize it as a static method uh, that term isn't really going to be used here right now we're not going to worry about that but it, it's a method it's a procedure that belongs to some object or class or something now you might have kind of seen this as we're going through the class but any procedure has you know, these parentheses where you put stuff inside of it, those are called the arguments of the procedure or arguments of the function or stuff like that. These are things that you give the procedure so that the procedure can work with them. In this case, our arguments are the string that we want to try to convert into a number and a numeric variable. It's a variable of a numeric type, specifically the same type as the numeric data type that we're using right here. The, you know, the numeric data type that this particular version of try parse belongs to. 
as opposed to a different numeric data type with a different version of try parse. Uh, each numeric data type essentially has their own version of try parse, and even though they're the same name, they work a little bit differently, and more on that in a sec. But the type of this variable should match this data type right here. Now with try parse, if the string that we give it can be converted to that particular numeric data type specified by the numeric data type that we type before the period and the try parse, the numeric da data type that actually has this version of the try parse uh, method, if it can't be converted to that numeric data type, then try parse will actually convert it to the type. So it checks to see if it can be converted, if it is valid, and if it is valid, then it actually does the conversion and it stores the value, the value in the variable that we passed in, in this numeric variable right here. However, if string is not valid, if it cannot successfully be converted into that numeric data type, it will instead put zero into that variable, which in some cases is a helpful way of checking whether or not the user gave a valid answer or something like that, unless you're expecting them to put in zero, in which case, um, that may not be the best, but regardless, it signals to you that it was not able to parse that string into the correct numerical type by putting a zero in that variable. We can't do anything with that signal yet, but we will be able to in a few chapters. Of course, by numeric data type, I mean integer or decimal or double. And for example, we could say double dot try parse. Uh, text radius dot text, which is the string that we want to try to turn into a double, and then double radius, which is the variable that we want to put this converted value into, if it's successful. So, because we're going to store it as a double, we need to use the double data type dot try parse. We are accessing the try parse method of specifically the double data type instead of, say, the decimal or integer data types. Uh, it has to be double if we're trying to put it inside of a double variable. All right, so some strings contain numbers that can be converted into any of the types using their try parse methods. So for example, um, 62 or negative 9 or 33 can all become doubles or decimals or integers. They are all valid. However, numbers with decimal points cannot become integers, but they can become decimals or doubles. So 12.55 and negative 4.23, not valid integers, but valid doubles and valid decimals. Also, a really interesting case is uh, the number 1457, but with a comma uh, as a thousandth separator, uh, so 1,457. That can actually be converted into a double and a decimal, but it cannot be converted into an integer, weirdly enough. And then there are strings that cannot be converted into any type, sort of like what happened with the examples I showed previously. Uh, anything with a dollar sign, dollar sign five, is not considered a, va a valid um, double or decimal or integer. A percent sign also disqualifies a number from being valid. So 7% would not be valid. Instead, you would want to do 0 0.07 or something like that. The percent sign is no good. Uh, letters or spaces inside of the number are also not going to be good. And the empty string, if you just type in two quotation marks next to each other, that's an empty string. Uh, that is not going to be considered a valid um, double or decimal or integer. And in any case where any of those values are not considered valid for a particular type, those all turn out to be zero, which is why those zeros show up in this table right here. So that is try parse. Um, you'll be using try parse for getting user input out of text boxes and turning them into numbers when it's appropriate to do so. So after you declare your variable for, um, say, double radius, you would then do what I showed before, double dot try parse, parenthesis, text radius dot text, comma, double radius, parenthesis. 
Um, and that calls the method for triparse. When you put those arguments in the parentheses like that, it calls the method passing in the two arguments that you give it. It will take the string argument, try to convert it to a number. If it's successful, put that into the variable argument that you gave it. It will put it into the variable to hold. And then you get that value from that variable. Um, if it is not valid, then it puts zero inside of the variable. And then you just end up with zero and have to work with that. So that's try parse. Super useful.